Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Sorgy Stories. Today we are talking about Emerald City. This is the game plan. He's Anthony, I'm Daddy. This is our series for all the destinations that we want to go to to see Milwaukee Brewers games at the cities that we haven't done it yet. Yeah. And all the cities that we are hoping to road trip to in the future since, well, we can't road trip anywhere this year to go for Milwaukee Brewers games, our favorite baseball team, as you can sort of see yeah. in the background right there. This is very close to the Pacific Ocean. Not necessarily one of the most traveled two cities, yeah. but there's so much culture in this town. So many great stories in this city because of all the different cultures that have found a home there and how they've connected to the water. And we'll talk a lot about the effect of the water and really how you can see the beauty of it along with all the other cool stuff to do in the city. But your first pick is sports related, yes. but it's not about baseball. Century Link Field home to the Seahawks and Sounders and us Packer fans have some bad memories there. We do. But it's an awesome stadium with an awesome plaza inside the stadium. Awesome closet? Plaza. <laughs> rewind the tape, rewind the tape. Let's see what I said. We got it, we got it. We're good, we're good. <laughs> awesome plaza around that area. And are you describing where the 12th flag goes? Is that what you're describing? No, it's so? like in the lower portion of the stadium. Okay. Um, Under the stands, it's like a big plaza where they have like games and it's a, essentially like an indoor plaza. Okay. Because obviously in Seattle, it gets cold. Yeah, it doesn't get necessarily Green Bay cold. Rarely gets below 32 degrees, but it can get pretty chilly during, during the winter in that part of the country. And the other thing about the stadium that is so incredible is the noise that the architecture of the stadium yeah. can create. Because you have the way that the roof is structured and the seats are so close to the field, it gets ridiculously loud, especially for an outdoor stadium. Yeah, and you know, you see that at Arrowhead, and they actually, I think I have the record, but check the Kansas City video out yep. down there. But um, CenturyLink is pretty close, and it is so loud, especially during those big rivalry games against the Niners, and they're in FC West Division rivals. Also, I really love to check out a Seattle Sounders game, their MLS team. They will draw big crowds to the, to their stadium, to CenturyLink Field. Sometimes they'll sell it out, 67,000 some seats for soccer, and the fan marches both. Uh, before the games and all the pubs that are all around that stadium some of the bars and restaurants it is just a crazy atmosphere for both the Sounders and for Seahawks games. Yeah. Number two talks about a lot of the history of Seattle and the Pacific Northwest being a place where a lot of aviation industry is found and a lot of innovations when it comes to aviation. You're checking out the Museum of Flight and you can see a lot of cool things, whether it's airplanes, spacecrafts. You can actually go inside of an Air Force One, mm -hmm. the one for Dwight Eisenhower. Built in 1958, the very first Air Force One jet plane that was made. Wow. Mm -hmm. Also, a lot of other early airplanes. I mean, check out where they got some of these and some of the eras that they come from. So they have World War One and Two. Fighter planes. They've got experimental airplanes. They have military airplanes from other countries, including the Soviet Union. Yeah, from back when they fought the Cold War, a lot of the airplanes that that they created, that they never used in combat, but were there just in case something happened. They also have a lot of jets in commercial airplanes, like the first ever commercial jets for United Airlines, the Concorde supersonic plane and check out what they have when it comes to spacecraft. That's the amazing part. They have a space shuttle training mock-up vehicle, and we're not too sure, but there might have been astronauts that trained in there. It doesn't, we have no idea, <laughs> but if they did that, be really cool. They also have mock-ups of the Apollo Command and Lunar Modules, what they oh, use wow. to fly 
to the moon and back, not the actual um, spacecraft themselves, but the mock-ups of what they used along with the lunar roving vehicle. You ever ridden an ATV? Your uncle actually rides one pretty regularly. Yeah. Imagine riding one of those on the moon. Yeah, that is nuts. <laughs> They've got one of those vehicles at this place. From the ground to the air and high up in the air is one of the most noteworthy architectural wonders of the United States of America. One of the most recognizable. It is the... Space Needle and it's 600 five feet tall, not the tallest in Seattle, but it is the most well-known. It's got an observatory. Mm -hmm. It was built in 62, 1962, for the World Fair. When they held it in Seattle, what's now known as the Seattle Center area. And check out what is rotating as part of that observatory. A rotating glass Lord, and I'm pretty sure that they have a rotating restaurant. They do as well. You better bring your cash. You better bring your pocketbook. It's pretty primo expensive. Yeah. It's worth it, but it's pretty primo expensive. Number four is the very reason we would be heading to Seattle yeah. to see our Milwaukee Brewers take on the Seattle Mariners in a stadium that was constructed right around the time Miller Park was constructed. It is T-Mobile Park, formerly known as Safe Cofield for all of you who don't know. It's home to the Seattle Mariners, um, who have one of the most interesting color schemes in baseball, <laughs> that's for sure. And... What's unique about the park? The patio they have. So they've got okay. this really cool, like, right center field, or center field patio, I'm pretty sure. And it's kind of, it's got some chairs. I'm pretty sure that there's a restaurant that's right by there um, in the stadium. That you, and it's got some chairs. You can, that, you can be there during batting practice. And it's really the best place to be because you're right close to the field. It was built right around the time of Miller Park, but its roof operates in a very different way though, compared to Miller Park, which has that fan roof that sort of merges towards the center. This one's a bit different. Yeah, so isn't it like Chase Field where it's just kind of... It's a sliding. It's a sliding roof. Yeah, and it sort of moves off to one side. That way the entire area is open when it's a beautiful sunny day, and when it's not, when it's raining, it just slides right back on. Our number five spot, it is a really cool area to experience wildlife, even if it's not necessarily in the wild, and some amazing animals to check out. The Woodland Park Zoo. It's 90 acres, so not as big as Milwaukee, but it has numerous endangered species, which are protected there. And the state of Washington banned animal trafficking, yes. so you can meet some great animals. The Greater One-Horned Rhinoceros. One-Horned Rhinoceros. That's a bit unusual. An animal that was actually sadly part of a big illegal wildlife trade. And then the humble penguin exhibit. Oh, penguins are actually probably pretty big penguins. Yeah. There are um, probably some little ones there too. And they were, er, and it uses a water system that helps contribute to the Puget Sound. Mm-hmm. Sounds water quality, assisting with the environment, yeah. which is awesome. How the water flows in and out and goes right into the Puget Sound in a way where they actually treat it and improve the water that comes in. So very environmentally friendly way of operating a zoo as well. My top five, again, we give the kid first dibs and then I'll take sort of a rest as we go along. My number one, you have to take a ferry ride to get to this particular island and we'll discuss that in a little bit but my first pick is an ode to american citizens who weren't treated the right way yeah. during world war ii it's the bainbridge island japanese american exclusion memorial back in world war ii about 120,000 japanese americans were forced to leave their homes and go into internment camps the united states was fighting japan along with germany and Italy at the time. Right after the war started, American government actually said, we're going to take this big group of Japanese immigrants who are living on this island just outside Seattle and force them to live someplace else. They had to leave their homes. And this was a tribute to them, along with a tribute to the neighbors who were European settlers who came to the United States who actually took care of their homes, tried to make sure that they were kept and that there were homes for them after this time was done so that they could actually return. They gave so much support to these 
Japanese neighbors who are taken away from their homes. Number two is a bit more of a happy story and I think a place that is incredibly popular to go to in Seattle, particularly when it comes to sunrise and sunset. It's a place called Cary Park. Yeah. It is north of downtown. We've been getting pretty interested, I think, with these top vibes, with, with our game plans, as well as with some of our traveling of checking out spectacular views. Yeah. What's up, some of your, your favorites that we've been to? The New River Gorge in West Virginia. Um, Chicago, going up to the top of the Hancock. That's awesome. Uh, what else? I'm going to talk some MLB views here. Pittsburgh, Detroit, mm -hmm. St. Louis and San Francisco. You get some great views of downtown with some of those stadiums. You get a fantastic view of downtown Seattle at Cary Park. They have some spaces where you can see not only the skyscrapers of downtown Seattle, not only Mount Rainier, which is one of the tallest mountains in the United States, no. just sort of, sort of shows up right in the background behind downtown, but of Elliott Bay and the Puget Sound. And you just sort of have to turn your body 90 degrees and you see all this incredible beauty right there in one spot. It's a packed place to go to when it comes to sunset. So be ready for that. Number three is the Museum of Pop Culture. You ever heard of Jimi Hendrix? Yes, I have. He might be the greatest guitarist in the history of the world, some will say. Is what? he better than Brad Paisley? Your guy? I don't know. I've never heard of his music. <laughs> but let me just really quick give a shout out to uh, Les Paul, the inventor of electric guitars. Yes, without Les Paul, there would not be a Jimi Hendrix. And there wouldn't be a whole bunch of great musicians from Seattle who've helped define the sound of rock music. This place is an ode to them. They actually have an entire like wall or sculpture of all these great guitars that these great rock musicians have performed with. And they have a whole bunch of different changing exhibits over time. A lot of interactive music stations to, to make your own music. Ooh, that sounds cool. So, sound sculptures, hands-on music labs, and you can check out the history of music in Seattle. Everything from Jimi Hendrix to Pearl Jam and Soundgarden and Nirvana. Also a lot of odes to great movies like Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars. Bum, ba -la, ba -la, la, 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 Luke, uh, I'm your mariner. <laughs> That's bad. That is so bad. That is such a bad dad joke. Yeah. <laughs> Comment hashtag bad joke. Number four, the Pike oh. Place Fish Market. Because Seattle is right next to the sea, right by the ocean, Puget Sound right there, there is such fantastic fishing and seafood that comes directly from it that feeds the restaurants that are all throughout the Seattle. We're gonna show off yeah. some of the best ones coming up in our next video, our top five restaurants. This place helps get all that amazing fish and seafood to all those, those restaurants. Yeah. What's your favorite fish? To eat. Ooh, I gotta say, walleye from Kegels in it is awesome. And, um. We'll put it right up there. Yeah, and, um, right there, I think. But, um, the link in the description to a video you can buy Spidey from a softball crew. He actually went to Seattle, went here, mm -hmm. and he was laughing so hard when he left. Oh, <laughs> why was he laughing? With how. The, these guys, the guys that are like working the station mm -hmm. are just yelling funny things at people who <laughs> are trying to catch the fish. Nice, because they, they toss fish yeah. back and forth to each other. So if we walk over and we're in like our brewer's gear <laughs> bef before a brewer's mariner's game, what do you think they might be yelling at us? Uh, maybe they'll be yelling at us that uh, they have better fish than us, which I would take oh, offense sure. if I'm Oh sure, you do, kidding. but we got better beer. Yeah, we do have better beer and uh, better, better beer to batter the fish with and uh, better cheese curds. Absolutely, though. Next week, you we're going to give yeah. you some exposure to a great cheese maker in Seattle mm -hmm. that might be able to compete with some of Wisconsin's best. Mm, but it is yeah. so cool to check out what what they call the fish mockers, the people who work there, and what they do when they sell fish. I mean, tossing fish back and forth. <laughs> 
It, it, it's crazy. And the cool thing is, four of those fishmongers who have been working there for years bought it. That is awesome. It is employee owned, which yes. I think is amazing. And by the way, they have pig statues. Interesting. Why do they have pig statues? What do pigs it, have to do with fish? Well, everything's better with bacon. True. That's not true. <laughs> it's true. Finally, number five on my list of the top 10, and the last one on our video here today, the Seattle Ferry Terminal. I'm trying to think of the last time you've been on a boat. I don't think I've ever been on a boat. Yes, you have. Chicago, we took we took you on a boat to do some an architectural well, tour. I remember, I remember that, I remember that. That's the last time you've been on a boat. This is such a cool experience to go on the Seattle Ferry Boats to take you to the Western Islands west of Seattle, right as part of the Puget Sound. And you get amazing views of downtown, as well as of Mount Rainier again, capturing just the natural beauty where Seattle's sort of placed right smack dab into. That's what makes Seattle such an awesome place to live if you live there, as well as just to visit. But it is the fact that there is so much water that the baseball team is called the Mariners. The Mariners, I am their old color scheme had blue in it, and it still does. Blue and gold way back in the day. That's where they sort of borrowed the old Seattle Pilots color scheme, and now those pilots are the Milwaukee Brewers, so. Yeah, who has a, who have a different color scheme? Brewers, please bring back those 82 uniforms. Please, Just we give, beg you. Give us some 82. We beg you. And the navy blue ones that we just lost. Although the current ones, are oh. awesome. Oh, I forgot. Cream, cream. Please keep it cream. Current ones are awesome. awesome. Next week, we are going to discuss the ways you can fill your belly <laughs> in Seattle. Our top five restaurant picks. What do we do again if people want to check out all that content? Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell. Ding, ding, ding. 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 And um, check the description. Um, we'll have links to all these places. And a comment. Comment question is fair thing to do in Seattle. If you haven't been there, what do you want to do in Seattle? And what's your favorite ocean? And if you travel traveled the world, then not just the Pacific and Atlantic, any ocean. Also, hashtag dad joke if you think my dad joke stuck, which it probably did. For little buddy, who, who I thank you for taking on my dad. <laughs> I'm daddy. Can you take us out, please? Song from the great city of Milwaukee in Wisconsin. Where they don't throw fish at, you, at each other. <laughs> so long, everybody. Cheers to coronavirus hopefully being over soon.